Wired.com posted a piece today how the meteoric rise for Pokemon of Pokemon Go has created a need not for Pokemon scooters or Pokemon scanners or even Pokemon Go survival knives, which is something I actually saw on Amazon oh, today. Geez. Instead, Wired mm -hmm. says that we need right now, what we need right now is a code of ethics for augmented reality. I'm calling it Pokey Ethics or Poke Ethics. Who better to discuss this than us? <laughs> what do you think, Ron? <laughs> I, I, I read the article and I had to laugh because I think it does bring up a lot of interesting questions as to what is appropriate behavior. But I think the point is the fact that it's you're out in the world playing a video game, act like a normal person. Mm -hmm. And if something says don't trespass, don't trespass. If you're somewhere where you shouldn't have your phone out, don't take your phone out. I mean, like, like it's times like this where it's like the obvious, like when we have to state the obvious, that's when I weep for our society. Yeah, it's the <laughs> it's the whole question of it being, it, it's like augmented, the, the promise of augmented in virtual reality is escaping yeah. to an, another world. And maybe with virtual reality, that's a, well, in some ways a little bit safer because you're you're forced to be confined to a certain area right. when you actually do that. In some ways it's probably less safe because you're completely blocked off from everything. Right. So someone could, you know, walk up to you and give you a noogie. Um, Although I was watching I was watching or a wedgie. I was catching up on a noogie. You got, you got it mixed up there. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I, did. Um, I was watching uh, I was catching up on Mr. Robot, right? Yeah. Because I've been traveling and so I fell behind or whatever. And not the most recent episode, I think two episodes ago, one of the characters was on the subway in New York and it was, you know, if you watch Mr. Robot, there's a lot of long silent shots yes. of just you know whatever so she's standing on the subway and to her right there's a a, a teenager maybe early 20s uh, woman with a samsung gear vr standing on the subway next to her just like reaching out in the space <laughs> and like and and doing you know but like obviously in vr and of course it's a statement of the world and the plugged in or whatever yeah. but like i i laugh i'm like oh someone's playing vr on the subway that's silly but it happens. They can. I've you know? seen yeah. I've seen the photos of the yep. people sitting on the subway, you know, or I've actually yeah. seen video of the, the guy yeah. doing that. Um, but I mean, in AR, you have this sense of well, you you see the world a little bit more, so maybe you know you you are likely to respond more to the do not trespass right. sign, whatever. But I mean, the people who are making these creations. They're kind of assuming, I mean, yes, they're warning you not to do that, right. but they also want to create an environment that can, that pulls you in and that shut, that to a certain degree shuts you off to, you know, reality because they want to offer you an enhanced reality. And case in, case in point, uh, third song into Guns N' Roses, I'd look to my left and my buddy <laughs> is there with his phone catching a Pokemon that was sitting no on way. stage. You know, like, and I was like, seriously, put it away, dude. You know, but like, that's, that's, I mean, it, when... The the like you said, Niantic has created this game, both Ingress and Pokemon Go, where the arena is the world around us. Yeah. And whether or not we need a code of ethics um, to that we all need to agree to, I mean, how can you enforce that? But it's just rather a reminder that you're out in the you're out in the public. Be, don't be a jerk. Mm -hmm. Just don't be a jerk. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in some ways, and this Wired article points this out, that we are interacting with real people. So maybe we will be nicer to each other than we are on Twitter. Yep. You know, and so that that is. Uh, the future. I mean, we've already heard lots of stories of people like meeting people and, you know, out in the world. Um, there's, you know, Pokemon Go dating sites. You know? <laughs> there's, yeah, Pokey Walks. And I've seen, no, I, yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen, in, in, I, was, I was riding the subway in New York and I saw a flyer on the subway for uh, Poke, uh, Pokemon uh, Bar Crawl. And it was, you know, they, they they organized a bunch of, you know, started a bar and go and, and like, that's cool. And like, and that's the thing with Ingress. Like, Ingress forced you to, uh, what I thought was interesting when Ingress came out was that, you, there are all these spots around the, the area where you can you know, make to your color or whatever. But when you saw someone else playing Ingress, you, just like Pokemon, you know, like, oh, yeah, they're playing that. So, mm -hmm. like, there's that person who I'm playing with. I'm not alone. I'm not isolated. I'm not behind a computer. I'm not behind a screen. I'm not behind a screen name. Um, right. So it does allow more accountability. That said, I mean, I, I think the problem is less about, I mean, yeah, there's some instances where Pokemon is involved in, um, you know, whether it's profiling or, you know, people not people playing Pokemon that the cops don't think are playing Pokemon and things like that. Right. But I've yet to see any fights break out because of Pokemon or any sort of attacks. Um, imagine if there was, a, you know, like when you're really pitting people against each other, how do they really? Because right now it just seems all fun and we're, you know, we're collecting these things and running around. And, yeah. But is the There's question... The I mean, we're talking. Oh my goodness! Why? This is just. You see, no, that's just I a. Br I mean, that's okay. Oh well, that's, I mean, no, this isn't a knife okay, for Pokemon Go. It's I'm on Team <laughs> Mystic. Right. I want a, a knife that looks like Team Mystic. I yes, I, yeah, but yeah. If you had to stab a Pokemon, you could. Yeah, right. <laughs> I suppose so. Or a Philip. No, I'm not gonna say it. Um, so okay, so then there's there's the ethics around people who are experiencing 
yeah. AR. There's also, I think, I think maybe the bigger question on as far as what this article is talking about is ethics for people who are creating this. Yeah. You know, behind the scenes, uh, the creators. You know, privacy is a huge hurdle for AR. Uh, intention for that data is is a big challenge. You get this term, these terms of service when you sign up for Pokemon Go, and of which there are a ton. They're collecting a lot of loca They're very specific, targeted, pattern-based, you know, information about people when they're when they're running this app, and they have a certain intention, or at least there's an implied intention about what that means right now. It's used to play the game. It's used to show me that I go over there and that I catch a Pokemon. Uh, but I mean, what it, what is the long term of that? They still have that data. That data might be valuable, and I'm not just talking about Pokemon, but AR in the future. You know, when you're talking about everything you see has Bits and bits and pieces of information that's pulled in, and all the data that's generated from that. As a user, on one hand, you expect that that data is to be used a certain way, but the long term is that data is still valuable. It could be used in some way completely different. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's definitely ethical questions uh, around that. Like for example, Google. Uh, I think it was around the time of Google Glass. Maybe it was a little bit before. Uh, there was uh, a mashup of I think Foursquare and Facebook or Foursquare and Google Maps called Girls Around Me that mm -hmm. basically pulled public information, publicly available information that people are sharing in a public space, but sandwiches that together in a new way that merges it on top of a map. So it's all information that you could get, but now that it's cherry picked and put together in a new way after the fact and um, a way that's totally un, you know unintended by the user, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes powerful in a new way and kind of dangerous or you know potentially dangerous yeah and, and even the whole the whole concept of pokestops i mean the pokestops yeah. are all based off of crowdsourced locations from ingress so they weren't even i mean so the people who who played right. ingress laid the groundwork for pokemon and then you've got you got weird po like I, I was just looking trying to find you know kind of articles are talking about weird pokestops but a, a friend of mine was playing po uh, pokemon in queens and one of the pokestops was hot girl i likes bedroom window <laughs> and it was somebody had added it in Ingress, and now that was in Pokemon, and and like, oh. and it was, and the photo was a shot of a of a window in an apartment building, and it was like, all right, well, that's crossing the line, yeah, and like clearly sure. that you know, that right. that woman doesn't want that to be a Pokestop, or her house to be a Pokestop. Well, but I would um, imagine. Yeah. So. I mean, in some ways, that's the same problem that we we're talking about with Twitter. Yeah. I mean, Twitter right. was created by people that uh, many people who all look the same um, were very similar, um, mm. were mostly male, and that's the same. I mean, most Ingress players were the same way, and they were mostly white. And so that's why you see that a lot, that there's not that many Pokestops that are in primarily African-American neighborhoods. And so what's the responsibility of Niantic to, I mean, that's not fair. Like, of course, you know, we've, we, we know all about, uh, we understand all about discrimination in Silicon Valley, but this is maybe the first time it's been like neighborhood yeah. discrimination mm -hmm. because it's like, it's not in, it's not in your neighborhood. Yeah, I get, you guarantee know? you go to Oakland and there's not a lot of pokey stops in, yeah. in, in that one part of the name of the city, you know? Yeah. I right. just found, I found an article here in January, 2013. said the de demographics of Ingress, this is as of 2013, but said the average Ingress player was 30.5 years old, 91% male, 64% non-religious, 60% speaks English as their first language. Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's a very, I'd say it, mm -hmm. geeky kind of demographic. And that's, you know, because it was a geeky kind of kind of game. And, right, um, so the same way the creators of Twitter couldn't imagine how this could be used to harass someone repeatedly who was maybe like a female game developer. Like, they didn't create it thinking, like, we don't care about women or we want women to be harassed. It just wasn't what they were thinking about. It right. wasn't intended, right. yeah. Exactly. And I think the the bigger thing about this isn't necessarily directed, because Pokemon Go is a prime example, like an example to use in this, but it's kind of the a similar kind of ethical question that we talked about before about robotics and, and AI, and, you know, in the long term, you know, yeah. specifically robotics, how some of the hard rules need to be made now because you know, this technology is going to advance and it's going to grow in certain directions down the line. And if you don't make those hard decisions now, then the way that that stretches out over the course of years, it, it could potentially get to a point uh, yeah. that you don't, you know, wasn't intended and that you yeah, should but have I, curbed. But I don't know point. how you can set yeah. hard rules. Yeah, it's hard. Both, both in the example of Twitter and in the example of Pokemon. I mean, like, you know, like yeah. the idea is that go out and explore your world and catch Pokemon. I mean, 
I would not walk into a graveyard to go do that. But if I was Some. if I was 15, I probably would have. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have right. even thought about it. Mm -hmm. I know that now as a you know as a as a much older gentleman. Right. But um you know or or you know to not go and play a game at a, at at, at at a Holocaust memorial in Germany right. or whatever, you know, yep. you know, like there, there are places where behavior is appropriate, places behavior was inappropriate, and those lessons need to be taught to people aside from whatever game they're playing, just whatever you're doing, just don't, like I said, go back, don't be a jerk. Um, the same thing with Twitter. I mean, it's like, again, it's like, I, I, you know, they, like, you, you're right, they didn't think about the ramifications of celebrity culture and public personas and, and people who want to make messes of other people's lives and things like that. What they saw was a, a truly, you know, um, pure intent for free speech of, and free expression. And, mm -hmm. and, and it just, you know, so like these are the challenges that we got to figure out. And, you know, if it takes somebody putting up a sign that says, don't play Pokemon here, then that's what it's going to take. I mean, it's a fad. It's get off fade. my Pokemon. Yeah. Get off my Pokemon. There you go. <laughs> so what do we think? Uh, Pokemon at a funeral? Yay or nay? Nay. 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 I mean, no. Nay. You could. I mean, there's a, lots of. I, w I would even go as far to say no Pokemon at the Guns N' Roses show, and I told my friend to put his phone away. You know. But yeah. then again, but in that scenario, I told him to put his phone away, stop playing Pokemon, and then I took my phone out to take. You know, a Snapchat moment and also, you know, so right. like, where, so like, where is the who, line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's more the fool? You know. So yep. I don't know, but. It definitely is a weird world we're in now. It is. Weird. <laughs>